super exciting. I am somewhere I've never been in my entire life. No, not just for a game convention or visiting. I'm talking anywhere, anytime, ever. I'm at the Southeast Game Exchange in South Carolina. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna meet so many people I've never met before. Talk to so many people I've always wanted to meet. This is glorious gloriousness coming together in South Carolina. So we're at a we're at NES Addicts house. NES, do I call him? Can I call him Jay or do I call him NES Addicts? Let's call him NES Addict. That way he can get subscribers. One of the very first places I go to is NES Addicts house. This is my buddy Jay's house. I talk to this guy all the time, but I've never actually got to hang out with him in person. Hi, where are we at? Now you're a part of the squad. Ooh, look at this. Oh, the lighting's probably terrible. That's it okay. is. It's awful. So we go to his house, and there's a bunch of people there. We got Russ Lyman, David Apuzo. We got a whole bunch of people coming. A lot of different friends in the retro world. Absolutely. So show me your game closet. Come to the game closet. Russ, what you doing? And right away, he takes me up to his game closet. Yes, it's a video game closet. And the first thing I see, a lot of gamers <laughs> film in their closet, though. It's actually like a very, uh, is a beautiful Wii U kiosk. It's glorious. Yeah, because no one ever sees it because it's on the right side with my wife's clothes. The Wii U kiosk, huh? It's beautiful. It takes up a lot of room. I'm surprised he has it in a closet, if I'm honest. Yeah, I think uh, the Wii U needs uh, a lot more love than it gets. Well, these are nice shirts, too. Ah, thanks. Wonderful. Oh, a Z bag. And then secondly, I turn like a little wall and he has tons of collectibles everywhere. Uh, yeah, Jay, NES addict, he's very into like oddities and knickknacks, like which which is like huge for us. It's like exactly what we're into as well. It's the kind of stuff that every NES collector, NES addict would collect from. Oh, this is, I haven't seen this box either. This Zelda chest. I have the Ninja Turtle one of this. Yeah. Mario phones to Mario shampoo to different boxes to different accessories. Okay, you got Zeldas on VHS, the Super Mario Show. I loved your your video about these. Yeah, those little dudes. Oh, see, this is the good stuff, dude. Right here and this right. is like the area of this. But and like I, I've been saying that a lot lately, it's like to toothbrushes, to these beautiful giant peel stickers. Yeah, I've seen some on Amazon before and some different versions, but these are like legit. You know, it's like you go to a ton of different places and being like gamers for so long. The excitement of seeing like certain games at this point, I'm like, cool, but I've even seen 50 little Samsons at this point. Right. Have I even seen this once? No. That's exciting. Yeah. Old school, beautiful, giant, big, bold, NES, Nintendo collectibles. This is the glorious knickknacks that dreams are made of. NES addict. Hi. <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> Your game closet might be the best closet. Look at this guy. That's a good piece of a collection right there. <laughs> this is my finest piece. <laughs> Well, good morning. We are in South Carolina in Greenville. <sighs> it's the next morning, and it's time to head down to the Southeast Game Exchange. And we're heading to the convention, which is actually massive. I'm with Tyler from Generation Gap Gaming, one of the greatest channels I've watched in a very long time. Also a proud member of Retro Force. Finally got to meet Riff and NES Complex in person after watching them for all these years. Good to meet. No, that's not enough. <laughs> that's hug. not enough. More <laughs> hug. And these guys are just as genuine in person as they are on YouTube. Oh, really? This is what I'm talking about. And then also with NES Complex, <laughs> you guys know him by now. He's a longtime friend. Oh okay. my gosh, this is the best <laughs> hug I've had all day. Actually, it's the only hug the only one I've one. had all day. Yeah. Let's hunt. Oh, there's a bee. See him, Bricks? Nope. Ah! Retro Force! Wait, you gotta film me when I say yeah. this stuff. Retro Force! You touched my finger! We get to Southeast Game Exchange and it is already right away way bigger than I was expecting. I was not expecting much size from what I actually heard from the years previous that it was awesome, but not that big. But this was giant. What's it like to see NES Complex? Underwhelming is kind of the first <laughs> word that comes to mind. I get that a lot. Yeah. And something I noticed right away is I gotta hand it to Southeast Game Exchange. Tons and tons of what I want. Retro video games and retro toys. Checkmate one, South Carolina.
I'm hanging out in Southeast Game Exchange and I see my buddy, Mega Dan. This is a long time friend of mine. This guy has been supporting the show for such a long time and I am truly thrilled to meet him. I haven't seen Dinosaurs for Hire before, but when I'm talking to Mega Dan, he's like, hey, I'm looking for a game called Dinosaurs for Hire on the Sega Genesis. I'm like, uh, never heard it, dude. I have no idea what you're talking about. But like, two seconds later, he turns around and he's like, hey, I found Dinosaurs for Hire. And also, supposedly Dinosaurs for Hire, which I've never heard of, is like Contra, but with dinosaurs. <gasps> and you just said it's like Contra with dinosaurs? It's like Contra with dinosaurs. That sounds like the literal greatest interpretation of a video game I've ever heard. Dinosaurs for Hire. We're Contra guys. But that sounds like the greatest thing on Earth. Uh, absolutely. If you've seen it, we'll have to play it tonight. Dino DNA. Look at this shirt, by the way. OG right there. Real fan right here, boys. That's, that's OG. <laughs> the venue down there was amazing. The selection of all the games was very overwhelming. There was lots of stuff that I never get to see anywhere else from where I'm from. All right, now I'm gonna get these custom-made NES controllers from Russ Lyman. You guys know he's with us on Retro Force, but... And I finally got to meet Russ Lyman, who is our newest member of the Retro Force. And everything he does is top-notch, man. Finally get some of his custom NES controllers, like this Castlevania controller. Really don't so Russ got us, check out this custom-made Castlevania controller and Friday the 13th. Let me take we gotta, it. We gotta open them up. I was gonna say, let's open them up. Making these custom NES controllers is definitely a passion of mine. Sometimes these controllers are left at the bottom of bins forgotten about and this gives me a chance and an opportunity to customize it to that person maybe a favorite video game they had growing up it just looks just like the end of the first level look at all the texture on the paint here it's like stonework I mean just look at the detail on this thing look at the stonework the drops of blood the perfect imagery of the logo and Simon Belmont with the castle from the first level of Castlevania I mean this is just amazing uh, yeah here we go Russ's actual <laughs> DNA fingerprints it's not your real blood. Though, no, right? no, it's not. It's not his real blood, so we're good. And I think it's great that you could just take the classic NES controller and customize it that much more to make it more personal to that person. And man, just look how awesome that is. The detail is great. You can't find controllers like this anywhere else. And I even got a Friday the 13th custom NES controller from this too. Friday the 13th. And Friday the 13th. One of my favorites. Most of the most of the world hates it, but I love it. I'm, I, know, I think Russ likes it. Too. I'm still trying to beat yeah, it. I have watched yeah. a video. So so many times and I haven't beat it yet. I'm glad Tyler decided to pick one up for me and hopefully he enjoys it and cherishes it as much as I did me. So I just ran into a guy named Chris who watches the show and he gave me something that's two things that are really cool. I'm walking around and a fan of the show stops me and he's like, hey, I got something for you. And you don't need to give us anything, but we're always extra thankful. Really cool. He gave me NARC on the Xbox, which is sealed by the way. Ooh. Also has the 1988 arcade version of NARC. He gives me NARC on the Xbox, sealed. <gasps> I've never even seen this game. I've only played the arcade version and the Nintendo version, which is awesome, which is great. I do like the video game more than most people, but this version of the game also does come with a download of the arcade version. But then he pulls this out, and I'm like, this is really cool. I like this a lot. Ricky is gonna be jealous, and then he goes, wait, hold on. The Laserdisc full animated movie Street Fighter 2. You wanna make your friends jealous, I got something else. He gives me Street Fighter 2, the animated on Laserdisc. And the reason I love this more than I should have, I will admit, is because of the physical appeal of it. Whether you like the movie or not, this is like, perfect kind of thing that you want to put up. for me I'll probably to be honest probably kind of put it on the wall because the, the colors are the exact like synth colors that I love the laser disc itself it has those colors I love it has that vibrance I love I'm gonna be getting a case for that to hang it on the wall a frame if you will to make that thing pop and look beautiful because I'm loving the way that thing looks and I need to play narc on the Xbox still I haven't done it yet I'll do it I promise so thank you I oh anytime it. thank you thank you for watching yes, more sir. than anything but thank you for this as yes well. sir my pleasure Not even close. Not even close. Oh, I didn't even see that.
Eh. Whatever. So this guy has a table full of magazines, but they weren't really any order, so I had to sift through them. And I've been looking for issues, like a few random issues between 70 and 100, trying to get all the way to 100 and have all of them. I found a, a treasure trove of magazines. So he had a few of them, but he didn't have every single thing I needed. I still need number 83. Anyway, I'm just missing a few to get up to where I, up to snuff. I think I found him. I'll be up to snuff now. But he only wanted $15 for them, and, and just number 80 alone, I think, is around 10 or 15. So I feel like it was a pretty good deal. The handshake seals the contract. <laughs> so it's funny because literally the day before the convention, I was at NES Addict's house and I was looking at his lunch boxes and I said, Man, I, I want to get one, but I really want to find a blue one. It's about to be used tonight! Not only that, but I want to find one that's in good condition because everything I was seeing out there was either faded or peeling or scratched up or had all kinds of sticker damage. That is really clean, too. Honestly, the cleanest lunch box I've seen. I'm getting it, sure. This thing is immaculate. I mean, it's never been used. It still has the paperwork inside the thermos. Oh, wow, it's never been used? The labels and seals have never been used, never been broken, so wow. That may have been the cleanest, best condition lunchbox I've ever seen. And I still don't have that one. It's like, I spoke and it happened. I think I want to get this. You want to get it? Would you do 35? I would. You will? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> man. You're the man. Does that always work? I want a million dollars. No! I guess not. Didn't work for Chandler either. Either. I like this guy. I like the way he operates. Where's Ricky? I'm kind of on the lookout for my buddy Joe. Now Joe is the guy who helped me big time build my arcade room, my new game room, my game shed, whatever you want to call it. And he also, as I've mentioned before, is a huge collector. He, had, he put some things on the side for me. What I was looking to do, you know I got my game room done. Um, the guy who made the game room for me, he's a big collector. And a, a way that I always thank him is I always randomly surprise him with like gifts. So I'm looking for him things I can get. And right away, flowers, chocolate. He's big into G.I. Joe. I see these G.I. Joe walkie-talkies. He loves G.I. Joe. He loves vintage. He loves that that era of cartoons, video games, and nostalgia. Man. And then these are for Joe, right here. My buddy. GI? For Joe? He said he's gonna throw them in for free. Well, look at that. Think. So I get him these right away. I'm like, he is gonna need this. Also something that I see that is really catching my eye, as I've mentioned, I'm starting to buy more VHS tapes. Oh, this, one's for, this one's for me. So Diddy Kong Racing, five bucks for me. But also a Diddy Kong Racing promotional VHS tape. Uh, just cool display stuff, as you guys know, that's where my bread and butter is right now. This is something that was kind of partnered up when they released Diddy Kong Racing. Sub-Zero, Mortal Kombat Mythologies, sealed though. Wow. He said 10, but he went down to five. Is Mortal Kombat Sub-Zero Mythologies, it's like a behind the scenes VHS sealed, really cool. Oh, Roger, Roger, 10, 4, Roger. So I'm really excited to get this, really excited to keep blowing up and building the VHS collection. I am, I am getting into it, man. I'm feeling it. But wait, there's, we need one, batteries. there's one other thing. Real. A real thing? I don't have cash. So Riff goes all the way to South Carolina and doesn't bring any money? Dude, my wife okay, will This you. goes back so long. My wife will pay The him. dude does a show about game hunting and he doesn't bring cash and he always has to borrow it from I me. I lost my wallet. I really did. Look at this is my wallet now. I mean, seriously, when is that dude gonna learn? Can there I borrow go. like whatever cash and I'll PayPal you? Yeah. That's it. For crying out loud, this guy. I love it. Okay, at the same booth, I had to stop, stop everything because I went at the same booth. I buy something that's been kind of tickling my fancy a little bit, and that I saw this. And besides me liking thermoses and lunchboxes, I recently bought some of like the Mario movie action figures, which look like really different and really weird. The Super Mario Bros. movie thermos. So it's kind of like it'd be kind of cool to kind of get some like Mario movie type stuff 
I saw some stuff over there, and when I came over here right behind me, I kind of, you know when I say you can start to collect things and you wonder, how did I get here? Why am I collecting for this now? I kind of want to start collecting for Mario Bros stuff, but movie. Yes, the movie that most people hate. Five bucks, Super Mario Bros movie thermos. There was just a, a deleted scene that came out too, like literally a week ago. So I'm gonna be on the lookout. I'm gonna find the stuff. I'm gonna get them. Gotta get it, gotta get it. I think most of you know this story already, but Devil's World never came out as a black box game, but it didn't come out in the States because the idea of the devil, I guess, was a little too religious for Nintendo. But it's actually an interesting, interesting, unique game. The venue down there was amazing. The selection of all the games was very overwhelming. There was lots of stuff that I never get to see anywhere else from where I'm from. I mean, I found a ton of Famicom games that I've been looking for for a long time, like Kid Dracula, Castlevania 3, Popeye. I mean, there's just a whole list that I've always been looking for that I was able to snatch up at Southeast Games. a Sega Master System and an Intellivision. Never owned one, so I'm really excited and emotional. It just, you don't expect people to do things for you like that, so promote positivity, pay it forward. You didn't mention Dark in My Head, you didn't mention Gun Story, you didn't mention Common Zone. I got your man at all. I just myself. It makes it better. Oh. So yes, yes I have a ton of Xbox controllers, Xbox One controllers, and I'm always wanting to kind of make them look a little nicer. I've been, I've been eyeing these kind of since last night when I was hanging out with him. We're all playing video games at NES Addict House. BP Retro, Brandon from BP Retro, I see on his table and he's just kind of sitting right by us by Russ Lyman where we hang out and he's got, and he's like, hey, I have some 3D printed holders for you put your Xbox One controllers down, you set them on top. These 3D printed, Xbox One controller holders, actually he has a bunch for a lot of different consoles that he 3D printed himself. And I'm like, and I have a ton of Xbox One controllers, probably like mid 20s. So I wanted to buy at least five of these. And he, hey, these are really cool. How much are these? And he's like, I'll be honest, he tried to give them to me, but I told him like, let me at least give them like a dollar each. Are you kidding me? A dollar each. I end up picking up a whole bunch of these. Should I, one, two, three, four. wow, okay. Well, I guess I picked these five. Perfect. They look gorgeous, and I have to admit, buyer's regret. Not the fact that I bought them, but the fact that I didn't buy more, because I bought five of them for five dollars. I should have totally bought like 25 of them. Beautiful. I'm happy, thank you, sir. Wait, let me, do you like it? Uh, yeah, I do. You do bricks? I walked to a booth, and I've been into fanny packs lately. I've been wearing fanny packs, but no gaming fanny packs. And I walk over to a booth, and somebody who watches the show apparently is running the booth and goes, hey, hey. All right, so I'm just like, wasn't even trying to buy something. And these fellows, who by the way, watch the show, they see that I'm rocking a gray fanny pack, and then he was like, look what I have. And he shows me a beautiful, gorgeous, Game Boy fanny pack. And this is the color scheme I want. The reason I like these colors though, even I like, even though I like like the bright retro colors, it's gonna sound so lame. This matches with everything. I love bright, I love bold, I love wild, but I also love fashion. And if it's not the colors I can wear out with my normal stuff, I can't wear it all the time. So a Nintendo Game Boy in really good condition too. With different pockets and openings. I love actually the bulk style of it. Some are too big. This is like perfect what I want. Look at this. This is a perfect gray and black color scheme with in good condition, plenty of pocket room. 10 bucks, I'm buying it. 
I only have a credit card. And the guy behind the camera, David, he tried to buy it. But you know, YouTuber discount. I don't, that's not a thing. So my fanny pack collection is growing, and boy. Give me my fanny pack. It's mine. No, no, oh, no, demonetize. <laughs> I love it. I really do love it. And I legitimately wear fanny packs like six out of seven days a week. How many fanny packs does one guy need? I mean, the guy's got like a hundred fanny packs. Ten bucks. Thank you, sir. Whatever. I'm about to swap this out. Ready? Call me the Fanny Pac-Man. Oh, Fanny Pac-Man? Yes, sir. You have sexy legs. Thank you. I, thank you. And I've told you that before, just never on camera, so it's like, this might be the first time I'm saying it like publicly. Thank you. It's I out there. You. Two. Uh-oh. That Fanny Pack just looks natural on you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Brothers don't shake hands, brothers got a hug. How's, how's the expo so far? Ooh, sorry, sorry, that thing's fuzzy. It got my <laughs> Rich didn't get me on camera that much because I kind of do my shopping a little bit on my own, a little bit under the radar, if you will. And even though Riff wanted to strangle me for not getting it on camera, I did cut a deal and finally got me a copy of Powerball. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff you just can't plan out on a show. I'm walking around with my buddy David Apuzo, and he was really jealous of the Game Boy fanny pack I got. In fact, he's jealous that I'm kind of getting into fanny packs. He's like, hey, these are really cool, man. You're picking up some really cool ones. I'm so bummed you got that Game Boy one in front of me. Okay. Right. Uh-oh. So... I've been stopped for a gift. <laughs> and I'm walking with him. And again, this Southeast Game Exchange is just full of people who watch our show. I love it and we are so thankful. Another fan of the show stops me. I got a gift for you. A gift for Riff. And I'm like, oh cool, thank you. I appreciate it, what is it? Ooh. Oh my gosh, it is a beautiful, like it's never been worn or touched black N64 fanny pack. You have two <laughs> fanny packs now? This one is awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh, bro. And I am talking the king of crisp, the the maestro of mintiness. This, one, I, this is like... I guess you don't need that Game Boy like, one now. Thick, high call. I have never yeah. seen this one, bro. Yeah, I found, I got a couple of them and oh I've seen that Oh my gosh, this is clean. Yeah. This is really Very clean. clean. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I got this and I just look over at David Apuzo. You're gonna You're fail. fail. You're gonna You're fail gonna 10, ten times, a hundred times, times, maybe even a thousand times. times. But that's okay. He's not stoked. It's one of those things where like, and there was a moment where I felt bad, but at the same time, I was very thankful to get it. Should I just wear all three of my fanny yeah, packs? Go to absolutely. The, I'm spitting because I'm cross so excited. Body, you want cross oh yeah, body, one of the bags. all of, dude. Honestly, oh, David, I'm sorry. It's just, it's, it's happening. I am, I'm becoming the fanny man, the fanny Pac man. You know Manny Pacquiao? They call me Fanny Pacquiao. <laughs> this, oh man, what a, what a great day. What the best day ever. Thank you. This guy's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate you. it. No, it's brand new. That's Touch it, T-Belly. Wow, that's money, baby. Does it have soft skin? Awesome yes, fans, man. Awesome fans. I that's, like that's this. Awesome. If he tied all the fanny packs he has together, he could go from here to the moon and back. The moon?
I think my favorite part of any convention is just being able to get to meet people. There's so many people on the East Coast that we don't really see too often at the conventions on the West Coast. But for real, you do need to plan to go to SEGE next August. It's in South Carolina. The people are friendly. Games galore. You will make friends. You will have an amazing time. I have to say that Southeast Game Exchange, all in all, was one of the most heartfelt feelings in the retro world I've ever had. From going to NES Addict's house and feeling immediately like I was a part of his family and I could just go relax and put my feet up was insane the way it felt. So to finally meet Tyler from Generation Gap Gaming and Russ Lyman and NES Addict and J-Love and T-Belly and Die Hard Gamer Brothers and Linda the Gamer Girl and BP Retro Power and I'm probably forgetting people, but there were so many awesome, fun people that we got to hang out with. Going into this convention didn't feel like going into a big, giant convention. Even though it was a big, giant convention, it felt like walking into a home that you're familiar with. Everybody's greeting you, everybody's hugging on you, everyone's loving on you. In my panel, I had a panel with NES Complex. Even during that, I legitimately cried during my panel. It's cool. Why am I getting choked? <laughs> this shows, I, I, this is the weirdest thing ever. I've never done this in a panel. This shows, this shows that I really need how much this community and I had a blast hanging out with all the YouTuber friends that I've made over the past couple years. And thanks so much, Riff, for being cool. I don't know what it was. It was something so, is it a Southern feel? I'm not sure, but the way we were treated and the way everybody loved on us just made us feel like such a sense of connectivity to the retro gaming community. I don't know if it's because there wasn't a ton of big YouTubers around. I don't know, there was just something special about this. It felt like going back to the heart of retro gaming and I loved it. Southeast Game Exchange, if you'll have us, we would love, love, love to come back. Brixton? Don't forget to, <laughs> that tickled. <laughs> And Riff, don't hate me too much for doing most of my shopping off camera. Brixton, you're officially grounded. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. See you later. I get a raffle entry. You get a waffle. Oh, if you put your eye really close, it's actually warm. Oh, it's like a it's like a hot massage on my face. <laughs> like a waffle. He didn't get to play Planko though. I don't know if I ever told you, I love the way they look. Oh, uh, hold on. Scoot over bro, I got your training packs. I guess it, yeah, yeah, stretch it out, buddy. Uh, yeah. See you, man. Yeah, baby. Oh, all right. Riff, I got something for you. Why are you wearing shorts with a long sleeve shirt? <laughs> because, I, I, truth be told, I have this shirt in short sleeve and I grabbed the wrong one. One for Ricky? <laughs> he needs a hug. I hugged him last night, but I'll hug him again. He's Wow, that's very tough. Run, run <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, South Carolina. Thank you, South Carolina. It was a good movie. Another prize is going to the wheel. So, and he has complex as a backpack. I'll tell you where you can put it. A fanny pack. In your fanny pack. This won't work, look. I'm feeling the love. And my buddy Rip here is holding the camera. You want to show yourself? Nah. Huh? I'll get to it. The instructions. Just feel. Just feel. Yeah. <laughs> We have a new saying on the show. The sticker makes it sicker. I gave it to This area, buy a nice house for a good price. I'm jealous. It's actually pretty light. They're pretty nice. Checkmate one, South Carolina. <laughs> wow. Damn it. Everybody dance, don't get it. Nice to meet you. And I was like, hey, nice to meet you. And I dropped it and this broke. You were high. The planes are too loud. That was the same camera filmed for the NES Pursuit. And I bought it. <laughs> no, please don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs>